Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to my channel, to my weekly Grace Devotional message. This morning we're going to continue to have one more look at the critical choice between the flesh and the spirit. And the verse that we're going to have a look at is in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and 8. And it says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit will reap everlasting life. One of the unchangeable aspects of being a Christian is that God offers only two choices for all the issues that we will encounter on a daily basis. So either we will live according to the flesh or we will live according to the spirit. As Romans 5 chapter, uh, Romans 8 chapter 5, I mean Romans 8 verse 5 tells us. Also, the consequence that accompany these options are inevitable, inevitable because of the certainties of sowing and reaping. Whatever a man soweth, that he will also reap. So here we see, for example, when an apple seed is planted, an apple tree is the only possible plant that can come from that result. Whatever category of seed that is put into the ground, that is the only type of crop that can be reaped. So as we look at this passage we're looking at today, we see that it reveals the principle of this agricultural absolute. Okay. Just as certainly to the planting of spiritual seeds in our lives. We only have two types of seed to plant. It's either the flesh or the spirit, leading only to one of two types of harvest. It's either corruption or everlasting life. So let's have a look. The first set of seeds and the harvest that is offered is an ominous warning. He who sows to the flesh will be of the flesh reap corruption. The seed here is viewed as words, deeds, and attitudes that would range from a self-service or a self-sufficiency from our side. So the harvest predicted from these carnal seeds is described as corruption. This speaks of destruction and dis decay. For a person whose entire life is only characterized by sowing to his flesh, this destruction would be eternal then. This word depicts one who never planted any seed of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Such a one would die in his, in his sin or in his guilt, separated from God 
for eternity. For a born-again believer who persistently or intimately yields to carnal temptation, this would warn of subsequent losses of spiritual vitality and fruitfulness on earth. Now, in this present time, but also we need to remember that it would indicate or reap the loss of heavenly blessings later. Even though we would be saved and entering into heaven, we would definitely lose heavenly blessings that are available to us. The second set of seeds and harvest extends an encouraging expectation. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. The seeds referred to here are works, deeds and attitudes that result from us humbly depending on and upon the Spirit of God to work in us and through us. This brings an increasing spiritual crop, crop described as everlasting life. This would be similar to Jesus' statement where he says in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. This promise of full fullness of life now, and it also indicates a great reward in glory later too, when we are in heaven. So folks, as we go into this week, let us ponder on whether we will sow in the spirit or sow in carnality or the flesh, reaping the fleshly rewards that are temporal or whether we would be reaping the spiritual rewards that are for eternity, folks. So let's commit this week to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and we commit this week to you, Lord. We pray that you will lead us by your Holy Spirit. Help us to surrender to your Holy Spirit. Help us to reap what we sow in the spiritual realm as we depend more and more on the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit in our lives. We ask all these things in your loving Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Have a blessed week ahead, brothers and sisters in Christ. We shall chat again next week.